Hey, good morning. Robert Medlin here. Uh, you know, this, this morning I want to deal with a subject that's that's um, uh, oppressive to the church, <laughs> oppressive to you, uh, and that's that's this idea that that um, that that once you're saved, that you've got to do something else to be saved. That that once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you got to go do something else, and it's a terrible thing. And Paul was addressing this in the book of Galatians. And he told him, he said, you guys, you know, I don't understand what happened to you. You know, you were saved and, and you believed in Jesus. And then all of a sudden these, these uh, religious people come in and start telling you you've got to obey the laws. And which laws? All of them in, in, in order to be saved. Well, that's not true. <laughs> in fact, uh, salvation is a spiritual experience. It has nothing to do with what you do. It has, what you to do, has to do with what you believe in your heart. And so when you accept Jesus as your Lord, you're, you're saved and your spirit is born again and your soul and your mind, your soul is your mind, will and emotions and your body, they, they don't understand the, the spiritual. And so uh, you put yourself in a place where you can, can, can get more of the spiritual, but, but what happens when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You're spiritually born again. You're, you're, you're a new creature. Jesus come to live inside of you. And you're as, you're as mature as you're going to get. You're already seated in heaven with Jesus. Well, what happened? Well, what happens is the mind has to be renewed to what the Spirit's saying. And so uh, uh, that's the process of the Christian walk. We just get our mind renewed and we change. Uh, but we don't ever change to be like Jesus because he was, uh, he, he, he was the only one that, that was good. And so... Um, so what we do is we, we focus on Jesus and what he did for us and we're seated with him in heaven and heavenly places and we're, we're already we're, we're reigning with him. If, if we can keep our eyes on that, if we keep our physical eyes on that and keep our spiritual soul on that, then we'll be okay. But what happens is when, when people are saved, uh, there's, this, there's this devilish thing that comes up where the devil wants to tempt you to get into works again. And so he comes in and he says, okay, now, now that you, you know, you've accepted Jesus, now you've got to do these works. And so, which works? Well, I was talking to some friends the other night, and uh, they were telling me that, that, uh, that the people that are transsexuals, they're, they're not going to heaven. They're, you know, they're, and uh, I said, well, <laughs> that's pretty strange. You know, people either believe in Jesus or they don't. If they believe in Jesus, they're saved. They can be confused in their mind. They can be confused in their in their bodies. They can be confused, but they still accepted Jesus. They're still reigning with him in heaven. But their mind may be overwhelmed and may, their mind may be overwhelmed and, and can't can't see the forest for the trees. But but in fact if they've accepted Jesus, they're already seated with Jesus in heaven. And so when we come in and we uh, we don't have to endorse what they're doing. You know, it's like, uh, you know, the Christian walk is, is funny. You People get saved and they get distributed to all these churches, Baptist churches, Methodist churches, charismatic churches. And some of them have, have great truths. Some of them have great error. So, but if, they, if, if you read the founding documents of these churches, you'll find that they all believe that Jesus is the Son of God that he died on the cross for our sins, and we're saved by believing in him. But then when we get into churchianity or Christianity, then we start looking at, well, what have I got to do now? I've got to do something. I've got to do something. Well, and so what happens is people pick a, pick a subject and they say, well, that's, that's too bad. Jesus can't save that person. Well, what saves somebody is whether they believe in Jesus or not, <laughs> not, what they're, not what they're doing. Because what they're doing, they could be totally deceived, totally wiped out, uh, just totally a mess. But that doesn't mean they're not saved. What what means they're what means they're not what what means is is that uh, that they're they're just not enjoying the full benefits of being a Christian. They're they're living over in the realm of the devil, and he's beating them up and confusing them and all this stuff. And so. Um, so Paul said in Galatians, he said, you foolish Galatians, you know, I don't understand what's going on. I had you saved. You guys were saved. You guys were enjoying life. And all of a sudden, these, these Judaizers, these people that come, represented the church 
at that time came in and, and confused you and told you you got to keep the law. He said, let me tell you something. If you try to keep the law, you got to keep the whole law, not just a part of it, not just the part you favor, not just the part you like. You've got to keep the whole law or you're condemned. Well, wow. Paul said that. Yes, he did. He said, you've got to keep the whole law. You can't just keep part of it. You've got to keep the whole law. And nobody's ever done that. That's why Jesus died on the cross. And so he said, now you, you say, now you, you slip back into this, into this demonic thing again. You, you know, here you are. You're, you're wonderful, and and you're just celebrating Jesus and what He's done for you, and you're seated with Him in heaven. And then all of a sudden, you're better look, looking at yourself and looking at what you what you got to do. And it's not about that. It's about Jesus saving us. And then He said, "I love you. Come on up here and visit with me. I'll give you some stuff to do, and I'll train you." You know, He wants us to just be close to Him. Be thinking of him all the time. Be conscious of him all the time, and not just not just waffling around in in some uh, goofy zone. So, uh, what we do is we we Paul said, now "You you foolish Galatians," and I've got to I got to give birth to Jesus all over. All I got to give birth to Jesus in you all over again. After I went to all this trouble, spent all this time, I got to give birth to Jesus all over. Give, give birth to, to Jesus in you all over again. So, so Paul goes on in Galatians to say, he goes on to say, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. He said, he said, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. That's in Ephesians. But but when 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 we accept Jesus, we accept Him and what He did for us, and we accept that He's who He says we are, and that, that He we He raised us up and seated us with Him in heaven. That's who we are. And so when you're saved, many times people just believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and they're saved. Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We're, they're saved. They're saved. And so then that may stop the progress. They may be in a church where, where somebody tells them, hey, hey, Jesus, want, Jesus, you're already seated with Jesus in heaven. He wants you to come up there and with him and visit all the time. He wants, he wants you to, he's in you. He wants you to be part of him all the time. So if they're not taught that way, then they get off into all kinds of stuff and all kinds of belief systems, all kinds of stuff. But if they still believe in Jesus, then they're saved. They're saved. So uh, that's what the Lord wants us to be conscious of is that when we, when we get to looking at the flesh and, you know, because you're going to pick something and it's, in yourself, oh well, I do this. Or, well, I do that. I must not be saved. <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. And then you, then when you get tired of doing that, then you start looking at somebody else and saying, well, they do this and they do that. They can't possibly be saved. They can't possibly be saved. God wouldn't accept that. <laughs> well, God accepts you because of what Jesus did. Jesus came and paid for you with His blood. He paid a terrible price for you an awesome price for you to purchase you with his blood and so and now he, he he stamps you righteous and he says you're a child of mine now you're a child of God you're righteous you're holy you're blameless come on over with me come on hang out with me in your spirit that's where he is in your spirit he's not up here in your mind where your mind's thinking all these thoughts he's not up here in your flesh where your flesh has got all this Jesus is in your heart he's in your spirit so, um, when we when we get our eyes on the flesh, we're going to get off into every evil thing. We're going to get off to where we're just like we're not even saved again. Like Paul said, I, I can't believe it. I got to I got to get you saved again. I can't even believe it. You know that you got trapped by these Judaizers, these guys that came in there and said you got to keep the whole law. You got to keep the law. Well, what's the law? The law is every commandment God's ever given. Well, the only person who could do that was Jesus. So, you're lost. <laughs> you're lost. You got to get back up there, get climb back over there in the spirit, and get get with Jesus and say, "Lord, I'm sorry I had those thoughts." Because He's in you. He hasn't left you. He's not going to leave you. But he, but your mind has gotten so out of whack that you that you don't even know what your what what ends up. So, uh, Jesus wants you to get back in solid ground, and He's a solid ground. 
he's what he did with what he did find out everything he did for you find out everything he's doing for you find out everything he wants to do through you because it's Jesus doing it so um, take this to heart that this is a trap of the enemy to try to get you into a deception to get you deceived to get you even falling on you know even feeling like you're falling away from Christ you're you're, whether you feel it or not, you you are being, you know, you are being your soul and your body are just getting totally warped, and even though your spirit, you know, your spirit is uh, is very quiet and still voice, and and he, he's trying to talk to you, but you can't hear him. He's trying to guide you, but you can't hear him. And he enter, he has to enter. Uh, the Holy Spirit has to intervene with with other signs and wonders, and to get your attention back again. So you get off on that on that works thing, and you're in trouble. So get off of it. <laughs> well, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day.